Well, joining me now is criminal barrister in King's Castle, Chris Dorr, and by the former Met Police detective, uh, Colin Sutton, who caught Levi Belfield. Well, Colin Sutton, let me start with you. Some stories just make yeah. you so angry, just on sight, and this is one of them. W what are we thinking as a country to allow someone like Levi Belfield to get married like this? Yeah, I, I think there's unanimity on this, which is unusual. You know, the, I, I haven't heard anybody say that this is a good idea, um, aside from one or two lawyers who don't say it's a good idea, but actually have said it's the law, he's entitled to do it. And, I, you know, I suspect that may be what Chris is going to say. Uh, but it's wrong. It, it shouldn't happen. Um, to me, it's a manifestation of a wider problem. And that problem is that predatory men who are convicted of crimes against vulnerable women, are still able to access, to speak to, to groom women from behind bars. And I think that's the, the wider ill that we need to be looking at. This is a man who has controlled by force and by coercion every single woman who has crossed his path as an adult. And we let him carry on doing it from within prison where he's serving multiple whole life terms. Yeah, I mean, it's, to me, it's, it's ridiculous. All right, Chris. From a legal perspective, we know it's currently lawful. So let's just agree that that's yep. the current law. But why is it the law? Well, I think it's the law because of an understanding that, it, that there is in our society a, a certain um, a, a acts and certain practices which are uh, available and should be available to everyone, no matter what they've done. Even serial killers on whole life tariffs who are never yeah. coming out of prison. Well, that, that's the state of the law, as you say, and that's what the, the law says. And it was surprising that you heard government ministers who apparently didn't know that when they were suggesting they were going to be able to stop it because it's Act of Parliament. Which but what about the fact that this is a guy who we've just heard used coercion and violence yeah, to mentally and physically control a lot of women, not just the people he killed? But here we have a clearly vulnerable woman. I mean, one of these, frankly, lunatic women who get attracted to serial killers like Levi Belfield and pretend they've fallen in love with them and want to get married to them. It's, um, I've interviewed lots of very dangerous people in my time for crime documentaries. These women are to a penny for reasons that baffle most of us. But she's clearly vulnerable. She's not of mental sound mind. Why should he be allowed anywhere near a vulnerable woman, given his track record? Well, I think you make a good point, but the difficulty for me is I don't know where you get all that information about this woman, because I'm not aware of all of that being in the public domain. My view would absolutely be, if this woman has mental health... What problems, normal woman would want well, to marry to Levi good, Belfast? It's not a bad question, but the point is you say what normal person would do lots of things mm. in this world. And, and I agree with you. I don't understand why any rational human being would want to marry someone like this. Not least because they'll never get to spend any time alone together. They'll be, they'll be allowed an hour to a month in a visit room, and that's the extent of the relationship. But you, 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 you would say that, wouldn't you, about any woman who wants to marry anyone who's in prison? I mean, and, and particularly if they're in prison for a long time. Well, not necessarily. It depends on the crime. But here you have a specific crime of somebody yeah. who snuffed out the lives of a series of young women and also raped and attacked and coer coerced and controlled many more. This is one of the most evil people in the country, but who specialises in preying on vulnerable women. And yet here is a clearly vulnerable woman, because she can't be a sound mind, that he's allowed to get married to. That is where the law, to me, becomes an ass. Well, uh, for me, that's not about the law at all. That's about risk assessment in an individual case. If, if it's the truth that this woman is not capable of giving rational, uh, op open-minded consent to get married, she shouldn't be allowed to get married. But why should anyone... anyone never mind right, but why should anyone on a whole life tariff be allowed to get married anyway? Well, Particularly when they've removed the option of getting married of a series of women they've murdered. Why should yeah. they? But you, you make a good point, but by that rationale, you would take away the right to marry from anyone who's ever committed a murder of anyone. No, I mean, no, that's not well, what I said. Where's the line, then? Well, Where do you whole life line? tariffs to start with. OK, so just that's 70, get... 70 or 80 people. Well, Pete, yeah, well, start with them. OK, and then uh, the very next. Well, then you, I think you look at the case by case. I mean, let me bring you back, Colin, here. I mean, you were a detective a long time. Well, I... how, how evil was... Yeah or is Levi Belfield? Off the scale. I mean, you know, he, he just, just simply the most evil, dangerous human being I ever encountered. But I, I mean, I, I would say what, what sort of society do we have or what sort of legal or criminal justice system do we have where we incarcerate somebody for offending against women when we know all this about what they do with women and yet we allow them 
to contact and groom mm. other women mm. once they've been convicted. Yeah, I mean, we just, I mean, we shouldn't Christian. do that. We shouldn't let them groom anyone uh, any more than we let anyone voluntarily engage in grooming. If there is evidence that there is grooming, and there should be, because every telephone call is recorded, every visit is uh, is monitored by video and by microphones. If there's grooming yeah, no going normal, on, you shouldn't be allowed but anywhere no near. No mentally sound woman seeks a... out and for introduced by the Yorkshire Ripper, for goodness sake, right? Seeks out someone like Levi Belfield to fall in love and get married. She's clearly sick. Well, you say that. Yeah, I do say you that. You do say that. But, but, but what about someone who maybe has a deeply Christian faith and believes in forgiveness? I mean, lots of, lots of very, very religious people believe in redemption and forgiveness. Are you saying that they shouldn't be allowed to, 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 to um, take forward that religious viewpoint and to try and find redemption for someone because you don't believe in it? No, I'm saying that in, in a civilised society where a series of young women have been robbed of their chance for romance, for love, for marriage, the idea that the perpetrator of the wicked murders is allowed to do all that is so sickening that we should change the law to stop it, as indeed yeah. the government kept indicating they were going to do. But the problem is you keep using words like sickening and evil. Yeah. All of these words, they're words that go back thousands of years ago. It's Old Testament nonsense. What we should be doing is asking ourselves... Well, you don't, you don't think he is sickening or I, evil? I don't, I don't think evil is a concept I really I, I, what? I, I accept. No, his acts were evil, undoubtedly. But I don't believe anyone is born evil. I just don't believe if that. If you perpetrate acts as evil as he did, you are an evil person. What if you're a, what if you're a sociopath who have no understanding of what you're doing? You there's don't no you can't compute. There's no suggestion Belfield's a sociopath. Well, He's not being diagnosed as a sociopath. Well, it's very interesting that you that you think that you could do all of those acts and be of sound mind. Well, he's not, to my knowledge... But, you, but well, to uh, marry okay. someone who's done, done those acts, you must automatically be insane. Well, let me bring back uh, Colin. As far as I'm aware, well, Belford has not been diagnosed as a sociopath or a psychopath who is completely immune from feelings. He just is, to me, the personification of evil. Yeah, I, 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 I don't think labels like this are helpful at all. I, I, I think you look at the evidence, you look at the facts, and the fact is there is ample evidence available to show how he interacts with women and what he will do to groom and get women... Uh, charm them, if you like, at first, and then act in a way that is coercive and is dangerous and harmful to them. And, you know, we, we listened. We listened to every single phone call he made while he was on remand for our offences. That took lots and lots of time. I think the notion that every phone call from every prison is actually listened to from beginning to end is fanciful. There just isn't the staff for it. They may be dip sampled at best. And, you know, the, w what I'm saying is, is that we should... We should look at these people where there is evidence of their history and their past offending, which shows that they are a danger to women, and we should take steps actively to prevent them from contacting women from within their prison. I mean, I think that is a very good I agree. Point, I'm, I'm not disagreeing with... The, if you have evidence that someone has been manipulated, coerced and subject to potentially criminal behaviour, the prison service shouldn't allow it any more than they would allow someone to physically attack someone in a visits room. If someone is being damaged by a prisoner, that needs to be stopped. But it's a completely different point to whether, in principle, you should change the law based on this one case to stop a certain category of murder, mar murder at marrying. It needs a wider debate than that, and it needs, I think, to get away from this idea that some now, the more harsh and inhumane you make the treatment and the conditions in prison, the better your society will be and the safer it will be for women. Well, our society... it won't be. Well, well, OK, I would say to that, our society is, is not improved or, or damaged in any way by Levi Belfield being in prison for the rest of his life. It makes no difference no, to no. us on the outside. Provided, but, provided but, he remains a danger to the public for the rest of his well, life, I agree. He's certainly a potential danger to this woman, right, who you seem to think may be some... God-fearing Christian forgiver. I have forgiver. no idea. I know nothing about it. Right. Just, a, you've I've, told us me lots about it. I've not read I that. I just know. I've interviewed a lot of serial killers. They all have women like this who become obsessed with them. They're all, in my view, damaged, and they're all vulnerable, and they're all sick of mind. Because how could you possibly genuinely fall in love with someone you've never even been with in any sexual way or physical way, and you know the crimes he committed on other women? To me, that's not... Yeah, you know, there's no doubt about the fact they're mentally fragile or well, or damaged because what what else could they be? Well, if they if a psychologist and a psychiatrist say that this woman is not fit to consent, then the marriage shouldn't take place. I agree. But if she's fit to do so, that's her prerogative. That's her choice. Yeah, but I okay. Not ours. Colin, final word to you. I mean, I read a <laughs> heartrending you're, interview. You're, you're, I, you're... I read an interview with the parents of one of the victims this week, and it was heartbreaking. Mm. You know, I've got a daughter, and it was just the fact yeah. that. 
they felt so robbed Absolutely. themselves of seeing their daughter get married oh. and now to have to read this with the details, the Versace suit, the Harry Styles music, all of it. Mm. It is all... Um, people may not like mm. this language. It is utterly sickening. Yeah, it, it, it is, and I understand that point of view entirely. Uh, but I, I, I want, like Chris, I want the wider thing to be looked at, but, but perhaps coming from a different position. I think that we should be preventing... We don't know what this woman, how this woman has been coerced, persuaded charmed or whatever into marrying Levi Belfield. We don't know what happened in those conversations, OK? Mm. And the fact is there is ample evidence that he will charm, persuade, coerce and mentally harm. And we heard him doing this while we were listening to his calls. We heard him doing this to a 16-year-old who was his mistress, for mm. want of a better word, where she just obeyed him instantly when he, he who, asked who her he to... Who he groomed from when to, she was 14. And that wasn't even one of the crimes... Exactly, that, exactly that, ..that was deemed serious enough for his record because of all the more serious stuff, which involved uh, murdering uh, people. Exactly that. Yeah. It, it's, but there, uh, there are I, lots and lots of men in prison in this country for offences against women who are still allowed access to those women and other women and can still harm them and make their lives a misery. And that's the wider issue that needs looking at, not the one-off marriage, which happens once in a blue moon. OK, got to leave it there. Colin, thank you very much indeed. Uh, Chris, I understand you're, you're just explaining the law, really, and that's what it is. I think, in this case, the law's an ass. But uh, that's, that's my prerogative and in a free society. Thank you both very much indeed.